another tutorial of the deep learning course. Today we will be talking about vision transformers. So we have seen already in a, a previous tutorial how transformers work, how they apply multi-head attention and build therefore equivariant architecture. But now we are looking into how can we actually apply it to images. So initially transformers were proposed for text, especially for machine translation. Then they have been also applied to language modeling with great success. And now recently, there has been also more research on applying actually transformers to images. We have seen also before that normally in images we had strong architectures like the CNN, the convolutional architecture. But it has been seen now that if we have sufficient data, we can actually just train a network that learns kind of where to look at and that close by um, patches, for instance, are related. How exactly that works here with the transformer, we will look into here. Um, and we basically implement our own vision transformer, train it on Cypher, and then compare to our previous results on uh, convolutional architectures. So first of all, let's start again with importing our standard libraries. We will use again PyTorch Lightning as seen before. And um, as I said, we will be also training on Cypher 10. We provide here again pre-trained uh, models. So in case you want to train your own, feel free to do so. You just need to remove then this pre-trained uh, network. Vision transformers are still relatively efficient to train, especially on the small data set. So this is also something you could do here on Google Colab if you want. So now let's first create or load again the data set. So with the Cypher 10, we use the exact same setup as we had in tutorial five, where we discussed different uh, convolutional architectures. This is especially then important so that we can fairly compare our results on the vision transformer here with the convolutional architectures. So if I do that, that's probably nothing surprising uh, how also Cypher looks like. So we have here our 10 classes, right? And the uh, images are 32 times 32 pixels large. Um, the classes then here, for instance, include horse, truck, car, and so on. So it is still a bit diverse and we can still use it as a benchmark data set. Of course, these transformer models were proposed and evaluated on larger data sets like ImageNet, but that's not feasible for us here in our small tutorial. So this is why we stick to uh, Cyber 10 and actually check are these transformers any replacement eventually even for convolutional architectures or are they just another architecture to consider. So now let's look at how we can actually apply transformers to uh, image classification. The GIF below here actually already visualizes quite well how it works. Namely, we take an image and kind of create words out of it. So if you basically see in transformers, we put in the words as a sequence, right? Or rather as a set um, and then applied uh, position encoding to basically tell the network which word is at which position. And we do it here a bit similarly with images, namely that we take an image and uh, separate it into patches. So we just split it into, for instance, in this example, into nine patches, so day times day, and look at each patch now as a word or as a token. This one we will then embed into a feature vector and then just apply the standard transformer architecture. Because then we can just say, okay, this is similar to a word. We apply our multi head attention, our residual connections, etc., and then just run it through our transformer encoder and predict the class of what it might be. Therefore, this attention in the transformer would learn which patches might be related, which patches to combine to finally make our own classification prediction. So, this uh, still a relatively simple architecture. The only trick is to go from uh, pixels to patches, and these patches then represent words or tokens that we then input into a transformer. So now let's basically walk step by step through this architecture. First, we, uh, we write a small function that basically takes the image and uh, outputs then this list of patches. So basically splitting an image into smaller images parts um, that basically then become a sequence on which we apply the transformer. We can simply do that with free shape and permutation. That is, I think, nothing surprising here. Um, so it's just a few uh, applications of uh, reshaping and permutation to obtain then 
a list of patches. Each of these patches then have basically a patch size times patch size times channel as feature inputs. And these one we want to then scale up to a feature size, like an embedding size as we had with words, so we can input them into the transformer. Let's actually look at how that looks like if we apply it to standard images. So the images we have seen before, let's maybe look at them again. So the first one was the horse, the second the truck, the third the car. And if we now look at the sequences that come out as the patches, if we take here four by four pixel patch, it becomes quite hard for a human now to actually see this uh, image. That already shows you that by splitting this image into patches, it doesn't directly help the network, right? The convolutional architectures always already have the inductive bias of saying pixels that are close by are related. This transformer does not have it directly. It only has it on patch level. So this four by four pixels and always know they are together, but which patch is now uh, to which other one? The net, we will tell the network basically that it is allowed to learn them, but it doesn't have inductive bias of directly seeing, okay, this patch is next to this one. That's why it first seems like it is just a harder task we, we do, but with enough data, it can actually learn it quite well, right? So just if we give it a lot of data, it can just find the patterns where two patches that are close to each other might be more relevant to process. So now that we have kind of a input, how, what um, transformer do we apply? So we have discussed it already before, but one small difference that we do here is that we use the pre-layer normalization. So in tutorial six about the multi-detention, we discussed that there are currently two architectures, the post-layer normalization, which is the original, which has the layer normalization basically in between our residual blocks and the pre-layer normalization, which has the uh, layer normalization before or in the residual block actually. And this especially helps then for stability and not needing a, a warmer regularizer. Um, so this is why basically the pre-layer normalization here helps and makes it easier for us to train the network. That's the difference when compared to the transformer we implemented in tutorial six. Everything else here uh, in the attention block you see is barely the same. So we apply multi at attention. We have here a small linear network. Um, and we use here the multi at attention block from PyTorch directly so we don't have to implement our own multi at attention again. In the forward pass, then we just apply the layer normalization for the input of attention and then the linear network and both of it as a residual connection. So again, nothing too surprising. Additionally to that, we now need a few more uh, parts to put it all together. Namely, we need a linear projection layer that maps this feature vector from the patches. So we had said before, each patch has been, for instance, four by four pixels times the channel dimension. And this uh, vector, we basically have to then scale up to an embedding size that we would like. And this is what this linear projection does. We then also add a classification token. So we have seen before in tutorial six to classify something in a transformer, you can just add another token that you explicitly say, this is the one that should be used for classification later. So if we run our sequence with this classification token through the transformer, we just take the output of a classification token and throw it through MLP to classify. We also then use positional encodings Compared to what we have done before, uh, we will learn these position encodings before we use just a cosine sign uh, positional encoding that was fixed, but allowed also very simple uh, distance measurements. Here we don't do that because in images we usually say, okay, we have a fixed image size and therefore we can also say we have a fixed number of input tokens all the time. In sentences, we never have that, right? We sometimes have sentences of 10 words, sometimes of 100 words. Um, but in images, if you fix your uh, resolution, you know you have a fixed number of tokens. And finally, as I said before, we will add an MLP head, so basically just a small MLP that takes this classification token output and classifies it. This is then all together in this division transformer here. So you see we have this input layer which projects the patches to the embedding size, 
we have our transformer, we have the MLP head, um, and basically here our classification token that we put in and our position embedding. So the forward path is then quite simple. We take the image, we split it into patches. These patches come then into the embedding layer so that we basically project them up from our small size to uh, whatever embedding dimension we want. Then we add the classification token and the positional embeddings that we learn. And uh, finally, we basically apply still some dropout for regularization and apply our transformer. From this output of the transformer, we use the first token, the classification token, apply the MLP head, and return that as our classification output. So therefore, that's already everything that we need to implement here. And let's put it also all together again in a PyTorch Lightning module so that we just have a vision transformer. We configure our optimizers as Adam. Um, the calculation of the loss is again exactly the same as for the convolutional architectures. We run through this uh, a batch of images and use the cross entropy loss to determine its uh, classification accuracy. Then we are already ready to go to the experiments. So we have now implemented our vision transformer. We have seen it is quite a simple architecture, especially if we use the PyTorch functionality for multi head attention. And now we can just use a standard PyTorch Lightning training function that we have seen often before. And let's then also run our model on it. So here you see also all the hyperparameters that we used for the um, for the training. So we use the embedding dimension of 256. The hidden dimension is basically the hidden dimension of the MLP, of these residual MLPs in between. Uh, we use eight heads, six layers. You could use even more layers, but for Cypher 10, six show to be more than enough. We use a patch size of four times four because we also just have images of 32 times 32 pixels. This gives us 64 patches overall as uh, noted below here. If we are, for instance, on ImageNet, which has images of 224 times 224 pixels, a patch size of 4x4 would be quite small. Then you also get a lot of words, and therefore that doesn't scale well. So therefore, for these uh, images, for instance, a common size is 16 uh, by 16 as patch size, um, and therefore you would also get a corresponding number of patches. We also apply dropout in between because we will see that we actually need to regularize this transformer. So now that we basically can use our uh, pretend model, we can just evaluate it, test it, so we can afterwards uh, look also at its results um, and compare it to the convolutional architectures. Do so you see here now the results are about 75% accuracy on Cypher 10. That sounds first okayish, but if we remember from tutorial 5 when we applied our convolution and architectures, we had actually their uh, um, accuracies of almost 90%. So there you see already the gap, and we can also look at this gap more clearly if we start uh, a tensor board where we compare the learning curves of the vision transformer and a standard ResNet that we tried before. Where we will see, for instance, that if we look at the training accuracy, uh, so the vision transformer here looks just more noisy because we recorded it per step instead of per epoch as for the ResNet. But you see that in terms of training, both of them learn quite well. So the uh, convolution architecture, however, was much faster initially, which is a combination of it already having an inductive bias of knowing which pixels are close to each other and using, of course, a slightly different optimization. But it's still, you see, this uh, jump start is also because we tell the network close by pixels are related and the vision transformer has to learn it. If we look then in the end, basically both of them reach almost a training accuracy of 100%. So both of them can overbit quite well on the data set. The dis difference comes if we look at the validation accuracy, where we have a vision transformer below and ResNet above, there you see this big difference between. So while the basic uh, ResNet already outperforms the vision transformer after only 3000 steps. So basically after one minute of training, it becomes better than what the vision transformer 
will ever really come out. And this you see is really the big difference because these convolution architectures for the small data sets have inductive bias of saying pixels close by are related. Well, the revision transformer rather has to learn that. And that's really the problem um, of why vision transformers that are not pretend, so really from scratch, will likely not outperform convolutional architectures on small data sets. However, we have seen that on very big data sets like ImageNet, um, where those architectures can outperform convolutional architectures because A, they can learn the inductive biases that they need. But we have also seen before in the transformer the distance between each patch is then basically equal. So each patch has then the distance of one so that it can look at very distant pixels within just one multi edge attention layer. This is not possible in the convolutional architecture and this is why the vision transformer can have here benefit over our convolutional architectures. Still, our results here show that despite now a big hype of applying transformers to vision, it doesn't mean that we should forget about convolutional architectures. And convolutional architectures will probably still be the standard for small data sets for applications because they are also more efficient and can run there for mobile devices with also very little data to train. For fine tuning, this is of course another story. You can, therefore, if you have pre trained a convolutional architecture or a vision transformer, then both of them are likely uh, fine tuned quite well on a new small data set. This is then also basically here the end uh, of the notebook and the conclusion. So uh, the vision transformers were proposed or were now really tested through from 2020 on end of 2020. And now we are seeing more and more um, advances. We also see that kind of with CNNs fight back in the sense that people see that if we actually fine tune these CNNs even more by just more hyperparameter search, more architecture search, etc., we can easily again outperform um, the vision transformers. So it's not clear yet if one of our architectures really have a lead of each other on these big data sets, and we will then see what the future really brings. And it is still an exciting uh, moment or to see really that uh, still there can be a big change in architecture, even for images that we thought we understood well.